Welcome to another episode of my favorite local TV show, I Know Jax. In this show, we focus on fun things to do with friends and family with a heavy emphasis on food and drink. After all, the I Know Jax motto is eat local, drink local, and be local. Many of us have family or friends who come and visit in the summer. And we who live in this area sometimes forget that people from all over the country save all year to come here for vacation. Now it doesn't matter if you're visiting or you're here on a permanent vacation. One of the places I love to take visitors is Singleton Seafood Shack in Mayport. Anybody that lives in Jacksonville or has visited Jacksonville knows how awesome it is to go and eat at a seafood shack. Well, Singleton Seafood in Mayport is just one of those places. Every time I come here, well, not every time because, well, take a look at this. I love to order the Mariner's Platter. What would you say is uh, has attributed to the success and longevity of the all the fresh local seafood right off the boats. We have the Mariner's Combo, which has uh, got shrimp, oysters, devil crab, clam strips, scallops, and fish. Always Mayport shrimp. Always Mayport shrimp when we can get them. Talk, talk to me about portion sizes, because you guys don't skimp. I mean, no. you talk about that Mariner's platter. Yeah, that's, that's enough. That's like a... a we, we say it's a Mariner's for two, but actually four or five people can eat off of it got a full bar. Um, we also have draft beer, which we just added this year. You guys have a signature drink? Uh, we have the, uh, we have several of them. Uh, Mutiny Margarita. Uh, we got the Purple Pelican, which is a very popular one. That's one of our best sellers. Good atmosphere. Uh, we got live bands on the weekend, and people love that during the summertime, spring. What's your favorite dish here? Uh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I eat it all, so and people always ask me, do you ever get tired of seafood? I'm like, no. no I'm just, I was born and raised on it, and I eat it every day. I just got done eating some. So. My favorite fish, I, I love cobia, um, sheephead, uh, very good. Um, grouper, too, but, you know, grouper's sort of one of those high-priced fish now, but uh, I love, you know, all the, all the fish is good. Well, we were established in 1969 as a seafood restaurant. Uh, before that, my mom and dad um, started out with uh, doing party boats. And my mom started cooking breakfast and, and lunch and had a uh, sort of a tackle, bait and tackle shop. And she started doing lunch and, and breakfast and for the people going out in the boats and then started doing dinners and that's when we established the restaurant. And of course it wasn't as you know, big as it is now but it started out as a 20 by 40 foot building and it's grown what a little it bit is. since then. It's grown a little bit since then. <laughs> How many square feet is it now? Ooh, don't, don't count. I don't <laughs> even know. <laughs> we, we seat 250 people so. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the love really shows through in what you guys put out as a product. We try. We try. It's a lot of headache, but it's worth it in the long run. What things in life that are worth it aren't headaches? You gotta work for it. <laughs> you met my wife. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My father made the boats, and uh, there's over a hundred of them in here, and they were all handcrafted out of his mind, there, there no plans whatsoever. Um, a lot of the boats are made out of uh, cedar, mahogany, oak, pine, just all different types of wood, and they're scale models, but there's a lot of history back here. Yeah, I've watched him do every boat in here, so I know which ones he spent a lot, you know, very long time on, on trying to perfect it. So. Cool. Does he, do you ever sell them? We do not sell them. I, I saw the signs, I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, well, we do not sell them and we've had a lot of offers and some of them have been <laughs> a lot of money, but 
If I ever sold them, my dad would probably haunt me. So that's the Mariner's Platter, and of course, if you want to have something else to go with it that's kind of a little unusual, blackened gator tail, and of course, one of the house specialty drinks, a purple pelican. See you at Singleton's. Staycation sucks. It's a really horrible word. It sounds like pure brochure speak. Now brochure speak is the kind of language you'll find in those glossy travel brochures, you know. Visit us and make memories of a lifetime. Or how about this one? There's something for everyone. Really? Something for everyone? What is it? Like vanilla or a freaking Walmart store? Here at I Know Jacks, we look for the opposite. Things that are unique with strong flavor, and I recognize that all of us have different tastes. We don't all enjoy the same things, and guess what? That's perfectly okay. Hey, and welcome to What's Brewing in Jackson. Every week I take a look at what's happening in the craft beer scene in the Jacksonville area. I'm at Really Good Beer Stop on 3rd Street in Jack's Beach, and today I'm having a lemon ginger rattler from Carbox. For most of us, the big thing happening this week is, of course, Independence Day on Wednesday. There's so much going on around town for that day. One of the events that I always thought sounded like fun is the yearly throwback baseball game in Clutho Park in Springfield. Now, as you might know, the players dress up in vintage uniforms and play, but the reason I'm mentioning, mentioning it is because they have a post party at Main and Six. They're open all day and the girls for Worst Busters are there as well. That's the food truck where they have delicious German brats. Baseball, beer, and brats, why not? The baseball game is from 4 to 7 p.m. and the post party takes place at 7.30 at Main and 6th. On Thursday, July 6th, it's brewery night right here at Really Good Beer Stop. And this time, the spotlight is on Uinta Brewery from Utah. They'll have Tang Hop Nosh and the Mango Lime Pills that are on tap. So come on and check that out Thursday, July 6th. It's the first week of July and on the first Saturday of the month, there's comedy in the tap room at Veterans United. I'm not saying that the beer tender there is funnier than normal. They have real stand-up comedy. It's called Comedy on Tap. You can come to the tap room, have a pint, and check out some of our local talent, and it's all for free. Well, not the beer. You'll have to pay for that. But the comedy is. So if you're looking for something fun to do with your gang post-Independence Day, how about that one? You can get comedy and beer at Veterans United on Saturday, July 7th, starting at 8 p.m. I do love craft beer, but every now and then I'll enjoy a good glass of wine too. And if you're like me, you might want to swing by a really good beer stop on Saturday, July 7th, because Gypsit and Pearl is having a wine tasting and they have some really good wine. So if you have friends who are not into craft beer, this is the night to drag them out. The Gypsit and Pearl store is located right next door and they'll be open so you can buy a bottle of wine if you like one. The wine tasting starts July 7th, 4 to 6 p.m. This month we have a big birthday. One of the older breweries in town is turning eight years old on July 7th. Can you guess which brewery I'm talking about? Let me give you a couple of hints. They have a great cider. My favorite beer they have is called Nutsack. Hey, Happy birthday to Engine 15. Happy birthday! Happy birthday to Happy you. Birthday to Happy birthday to you. Before I go, I want to let you know about Hops That Help. It's a big fundraising event for the Tom Coughlin J Fund coming up in July. The event is being held at Southern Swells in Jack's Beach, and the Bearded Pig is supplying the food, so you know the food's going to be awesome. Food, live music, and craft beer all for a good cause. And hey, Everybody who buys a ticket gets a coupon for a free flight right here at Really Good Beer Stop. Hops That Help takes place on July 16th at Southern Swells. You can get your tickets at Eventbrite. That's it for this time. Now, if you want to try a lemon ginger rattler from Carbock, you need to hurry here because at Really Good Beer Stop, they rotate their 20 beers on tap, so there's always something new. Cheers. Jacksonville Beach's ultimate craft beer and growler store. Our motto is eat local, drink local, and be local. And one of my favorite things about our city is the craft beer scene. We have so many craft breweries and it doesn't look like the expansion is slowing down at all. 
Now, when I was younger, I didn't like beer at all. I would drink wine or a cocktail, but I, and I also did like cider, but beer, no way. Back then, I had no idea there were so many different flavors of beer. I thought beer was a big box thing, which to me was pretty tasteless. I also remember that everyone was making fun of British pubs because the beer was not, to us, cold enough. Later I learned serving something ice cold really means that you're not tasting the flavors the same way. Now I don't really know what style of craft beer is my favorite. I don't really like hoppy beers, so IPAs are often not my favorites, but pretty much everything else is. Now being a southern boy, I love fried chicken. When I grew up, my mom would make fried chicken and it was one of my favorite meals. Now I really enjoy fried chicken with a kick, so Kenny Gilbert's hot chicken is one of my favorites. Here's another place that serves up a unique chicken combo. I'm here at Hangar Bay on Mayport Road and I'm trying my favorite dish here which is the Hellfire Ramen and Fried Chicken Combo. I know it sounds weird, but it tastes great. Hellfire is our version of what's known as Tantan uh, Ramen in Japan, which is uh, done the Hangar Bay way. We make a homemade spicy ground pork, throw some scallions, green onions on there, and obviously the noodles. Uh, it's got a nice spicy bite to it. It's about three, three and a half out of five not meant to blow anyone out of the water, but have a nice little kick to it to make it different than the other traditional ramen we sell. So what possessed you to take up doing ramen and fried chicken together? Uh, there was no ramen in this area. No one has done fried chicken and ramen to my knowledge. Ramen's easy to make, it's noodles and water, and more importantly, who doesn't like fried chicken? military theme is different. Um, I think the fact that chicken and ramen is unique. Uh, that's a draw for people who are willing to get out of their box. Uh, if they can get past the idea of, well, what's that all about? Then usually they find something on the menu that they like. So we have what's known as the best fries ever, which also takes the Hellfire concept, uh, adds six types of cheeses, uh, scallions, green onions over french fries, which are already very good fries. Uh, we've got the Mark 50, which is a spicy sausage sandwich, also based on the, the Hellfire topping. So if you like a spicy dog, that's going to be it right there. Um, and we have mac and cheese, fried mac and cheese, and fried homemade biscuits, which are also very unique. Having a restaurant is like flying a helicopter. When you're flying a helicopter, you're trying to keep 50,000 moving pieces together going in one direction and one speed. That's kind of like a restaurant. I know they think the Hellfire is spicy, but me, I'd like to kick it up another notch or two. Listen, if you have a favorite dish somewhere that I should try, let me know. Maybe I'll try it. I'm a very adventurous eater. I'm not like one of those crazy competitors on TV that will scarf down live scorpions for a chance to win money. And I won't do well in any of those competitions where you have to eat a gigantic amount of food in a record time either. I'm adventurous, but I'm not necessarily fast. I know Southerners are always accused of being a bit slow and when it comes to eating, well, it's true. I'm not fast, but I do enjoy exploring different types of food as well as different cultures. That's one of my favorite things about being the host of I Know Jack. I do get to taste a lot of different types of food. That's why I say I have the best job in Jacksonville. This year, Independence Day falls in the middle of the week. Here are some of the places where you can celebrate your 4th of July. The fireworks are already at the baseball grounds on July 3rd. The Jumbo Shrimp are playing Montgomery at 7 p.m. and they're giving away patriotic Jumbo Shrimp caps to the first 2,000 fans through the gates. There's also fireworks right after the game. Restaurant Orsay is again doing their annual 4th of July Backyard Barbecue. 
Now, before you head out to see the fireworks, you can spend the day at Orsay for food, fun, and libations, all while supporting Florida's First Coast YMCA. For $35, you can get all you can eat. Now, I took a look at the menu and they had Orsay Country Boil, Korean Slow Smoked Pork Shoulder Sliders, Burgers, Smoked Trout Dip, Desserts, and so much more. The food at Orsay is fantastic, so I'd say that $35 is a real good deal. You can find out more info on their Facebook page. Now, the main hub for Independence Day is, of course, downtown. Channel 4 is broadcasting everything live again this year. The annual 4th of July celebration downtown includes live performances, family-friendly activities, food and drinks, and fireworks over the river. The main downtown fireworks will begin at 945. You can see the display from the Riverwalk on either side of the St. John's. Now, speaking of downtown, Volstead is hosting a street party on Independence Day. There will be live music, food, and the Happy Grilled Cheese food truck will be there. They'll have drinks, games, and lots more for kids. They're also shutting down Adam Street for a block party. All this starts at 6 p.m. Another option is to try to avoid the crowd downtown and head over to Riverside Arts Market for their annual 4th of July celebration with live music, food, beer, and kids' activities. That starts at 6 p.m. and you can see the downtown fireworks from there as well. Earlier in the day, there's the traditional baseball game in Springfield where the west side and east side battle it out. Everybody is decked out in turn-of-the-century garb. Lots of fun for the whole family. Picnics and tailgating is encouraged. The game begins at 4 p.m. in Clutho Park in Springfield and could be a great way to start your evening. For those of you in the beach area, there will be fireworks at the Jacksonville Beach Pier. It's really easy to see this display from just about any point on the beach. So pack up your gang, your blanket or chairs and head to the beach. In St. Augustine, the 4th of July concert and fireworks start at 6 p.m. with music in Plaza de la Constitucion. At 9.30 p.m., one of the largest fireworks displays on the East Coast bursts above the ancient Castillo de San Marcos and reflects in the waters of the Matanzas Bay. Best vantage points are along the bayfront between Castillo and the Bridge Alliance. Expect lots of people and lots of traffic. Now, I hope you will have a great 4th of July with friends and family. For more ideas and more details about upcoming events, please visit my website and check out the post with the clever little name, Fun Things to Do in July. I'm hoping that you'll have a wonderful and safe 4th of July with your friends and family. I'll be back next week with a new episode of I Know Jax, and until then, I'll see you on the internet.